Good morning, everybody. Good old Terry here, still in Hell's Armpit, which actually ain't horrible today. It's only 94 at the moment, which um, doesn't sound great, but hey, we came down from the one teens um, yesterday. We got about, oh, I'm going to guess uh, almost a quarter of an inch of rain, which doesn't sound like much to y'all out in Florida or somewhere like that, but uh, out here in Hell's Armpit, that might as well be Noah's Flood. So, uh, got a nice comfy temperature today. The humidity's kind of high. We're at 60% now, which, um, you know, I grew up in the south. So I'm used to the humidity, so that feels good to me. But to the natives out here, they, um, they'd rather dry up at 115 or something like that. Not me. I'm enjoying the humidity. Plus, when you're me, you can't have a bad hair day from it. So, anyway, uh, today's going to be a day of workbench challenges, um, which I'll show you that early in the video here. And then we're going to work some more on the engine and um, clean up these uh, fuselage halves that were started. So uh, they're ready to start assembly on and we'll see if we can get into the cockpit. I'm not sure if we're going to get that far today. But anyway, uh, thanks for joining me and let's so get to amount of you have been with me a while. You remember my old open table design I had to work out here. I got this desk from my neighbors. It used to be uh, one of those colonial brown desks and I painted it white and I brought it in here. I had some ideas for it. Um, some of the good that came out of it is I can uh, vent directly out of the back of the desk and send it outside. I can hang up some of my wife's vacuum attachments and my bottle dryers here. And uh, But as I bring it around, you're going to see the, the not so good side of it. And that's that it's my table used to come out farther, like probably to about here. And while this is great for paint storage, and it's mainly the reason I got this thing is I love having the paints right there in front of me. Um, I love having drawers down here. The problem is a lot of these things here that I used to have up on the desk in front of me stacked on each other aren't there anymore. Um, so I'm always getting up and reaching for tools instead of getting up and just bringing a few bottles of paint over. The other thing is the work area itself is really narrow. I mean, when I put this up here, you can see what I'm talking about from like here where the desk begins to here where it ends is about, it might be 10 inches. I have to scoot way back to get to the drawer. So I'm always moving back and forth. And um, you can see for the, you guys know how it is. You spread out as you work and there just isn't anywhere to do it. So I'm probably gonna take this desk over to St. Vincent de Paul or something and uh, remake an open table design I had before. Um, but something I'm going to keep the same is I'm going to keep my little portable window box AC unit right near me because you can see it's only like three feet from me and that's a huge difference when you're working out here. It keeps it from a, about 110, 115 to about 105 which doesn't sound great but boy it's a huge difference and it feels good. I also like the magnet attachments. I've got to keep some of my work tools here handy. That's very good. I'm going to keep those in the back of the tool desk. Or maybe I'll move it sideways, I don't know. But anyway, so um, just uh, something to think about when you guys are designing your your space and putting things together. Um, your workflow is really going to make your job all more fun or more of a pain, depending on how it is. And right now I'm at the, it's kind of a pain stage, so this is all going to okay. change. So let me tell you the objective here. Um, I showed you on the last video how we had already done this cylinder bank here. And you can kind of, hopefully you can see it. Um, black's tough to really get, you know, good reflect. Good, unless it's a gloss black on a slick surface, it's hard to get a good uh, reflection off. But you can see where the fins on the cylinders really kind of pop out nicely if, the, if I'm tilting this right and it's staying in focus. And I've addressed the, uh, the lifters, the lines that went through the lifters, and I've really brought down the lines that went through the tops of the cylinder halves. So I cemented this together last night as best I could. Um, one cylinder at a time. What I did was I used the uh, the fast drying, the quick setting uh, to me extra thin, and one cylinder at a time. I cemented it, and I did my best to keep those lines to a minimum. But as you can see, they're still pretty pronounced. Um, let me get a good. There we go. Now it's looking at it better. And I've addressed most of the lifters already, um, so I've toned those down quite a bit. There's still a little bit to do, but these lines on the cylinder halves are still really pronounced. If 
I can get this thing to focus for me, there we go. You can really see them blatantly. So what we're gonna do, and I kind of talked you through it last time, but I didn't actually show you how I do it. We're gonna take care of these. So as smoothly as possible, let me move my camera into a position where we can do this, and I'll show you what we're gonna need. Um, you're going to need, of course, your object of work, which is our cylinder bank. And I like to use this knife. Uh, this is made by Mozart. A lot of guys don't like it because it fits kind of wonky in your hand. It's not quite as comfortable as a regular round handle is, you know. But what I like about it is this blade is really, really tough. It's uh, It doesn't go snapping on you. The tip's a little bit rounded off. So you can... Uh, don't have to worry about breaking the tip off it and it's 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 just sturdier and it's great for jobs like this where you're going to be putting it under a lot of stress you can see i'm doing this and the blades bending before it's breaking so if you don't have one of these i, I wouldn't go buy one just for this purpose but i would use a knife with an older blade maybe a, a thicker blade that's a little tougher than the regular silver ones maybe get one of those gold blade exactos but anyway uh getting back to it um, you're going to need a bottle of regular Tamiya Extra Thin, not the thick setting. Um, and if you're like me, you're going to need your uh, your birth control glasses. And some really thin wire. And uh, this is going to be for pulling. I had been doing it with the knife, just rocking it back and forth. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get this thread and I'm going to take a piece. And I'm going to put the uh, cylinder bank in a vise and I'm going to go back and forth with the wire. It won't try to stick to the wire too badly and I'm using 32 gauge because that's the smallest I could find if you can find something a little smaller that's even better um, so let's uh, get to work on this I'm gonna get this up in the camera here or at least zoom in maybe for you and I'm going to put this to me extra thin on let's take this one as an example not a ton, but enough to stay damp for a little bit. And this one's pretty good to start with. This one's kind of already got a good tame line. So I'm going to go right to the, uh, to the knife on this one instead of using the wire. And I'm just going to run them back and forth. I get right up between the fins with the knife and I just run it. And if you're using the knife, just try to go in one direction. So you don't pull it back through. And I'm gonna have to put the old BC glasses on here because my old windows can't see this well. There we go, now I can see what I'm doing. Get this in the camera for you. Find the fin first and then carry the knife up with it. If you just start at the top, you're going to end up missing the missing the gap. So start down here and then just work your way up with it and across. And uh, you youngsters aren't going to have as much trouble with this because your eyes are still good, but... Those folks who need a little help have to move a little slower. So now I've got that thing looking pretty much like I want it. That line's still there. It's more of a shadow than anything. But when you look at it head on, when you look at it head on, you can see there's a little cleanup. I'm just going to let that dry a little longer. Then I'm going to hit it with the knife again. In fact, for this part, I'm probably going to hit it with, the, uh, with a sharper knife. But let's move to the next. Let me find a cylinder that's in pretty bad shape like uh yeah like this guy right here this one you can see it's pretty it's got like a step there so this one we're gonna scrape it first okay and we're gonna lose our fin so but that's just how the cookie crumbles so i'm scraping it out one way here you can go all the way across in one direction if you want it doesn't matter the important thing is try to try to uh lose as little bit of that fin as you can with the line so now you can see in here it's kind of smooth that's little that little gap there this is where I'm going to wet it with my Tamiya extra thin 
regular extra thin. I'm gonna let that set there just a little while. And while that's starting to set, I'm gonna bring my vise out and get set up for the next scene. Okay, we're back. Um, I'll show you this vise after this scene. It's called a Pana vise, P-A-N-A vise. And I really like this thing for a number of reasons, which I'll show you at the end. But this dried out while I was setting up, so I'm gonna put just a little more to be extra thin on there and so let it sit for a little bit. And I'll point out now, while I've got it up close, what I really like about this thing is that not only can you pose it in any position, which you'll see as I zoom out later, but I like that the, it's got rubber sides on it with grooves in them so I can get things in here without smashing them. I can tighten it up to where the thing's in place pretty well and it's not gonna rock around and fall out, but it's not gonna be damaged either. But anyway, now that this pit, this to me extra thin is there, I'm gonna get this wire and I'm gonna get it down the fin and I'm just gonna go like that on each cylinder. I'm pulling on it pretty hard so I'm tighten it up a little more. There we go. And make sure your wire is good and straight. And I'm just going to kind of go down. And this is a process. It's going to take a few times. It's not going to be done in one try. And then I'm just going to put a little more thin on there. Lightly this time. And do it with the directions of your grooves, not against them now. Because now you've got your grooves started. And like I said, this is 32 gauge. This is really small, but if you can get smaller, even better. You know what I mean? The smaller, the better in this case. And I hold it like this. I like to use my thumbs as leverage. And then again, I'm going to start down where the fin is, and I'm just going to go with it. Start down on the side. Sorry about the camera shaking, folks. I'm a, I got a power wire going into it, and my hand is bumping it. And there's probably an easier way out there. Some of you might know, and I am all ears if you do have a way to get this done better. I always do enjoy benefiting from the minds of others who are more clever than me. So you can see right here where I let it roll back on itself. I got a little bit of a gum up there, but I'll just take care of that with the next one. So I'm going to run this through about oh, three more times. I'm not going to make you watch it, but uh, I'll show you the finished product next. So another option you can use if you've got one of these curved um, X-Acto blades, they're nice because you can roll with it as you go. Let me see if I can get this up close enough. You can kind of roll with it. and it's You see what I mean? How the blade breaks away from it as you do it instead of pulling it through. Another option is you can go in here and get... I got the... Ah. Well, shit. Now I'm seeing why this desk was free. Um, son of a bitch. Um, go in this drawer here. Yeah, this is staying in the video. This is freaking comedy gold. Um, I've got some scalpel blades in here. Let me empty this out and get them out. Why did we get more than I bargained for? I told you we were going to have a few workplace workstation problems today. But, man, it's just superseded even my expectations. Um... So uh, you see the problem with the small working space and not being able to have everything because for how many years I knew where everything was. I mean, if I needed uh, the glues, I, boom, there, there it was. I needed blades, boom, right there it was. Uh, you, my, my razor saws right there. I knew everything was. Now it's all in different places. But, and then the, the drawer handle breaks. Um, then I go to open the, the other drawer on the bottom and the, um, the shelf track breaks. So this desk is... I said, I'm going to prop well before I finish this year, I'm going to start working on fixing this work station up. But here's the funny thing. You know, there's certain things you buy, um, you know, uh, that you don't use very often. They're, they're tremendously handy when you use them, but you don't use them often. So you put them somewhere up on the side. One of the things is um, these injection needles I bought. You know, I don't buy injection needles as a rule because I'm not a drug addict um, and I'm not an insulin dependent diabetic either. But Another thing, and what I was looking for, for the purpose of this, was to get um, a scalpel blade, because they're much finer than even these really good knife blades. 
So I'm looking all over for my scalpel blades. Um, they weren't in the drawer, the broken drawer that I thought they'd be in. So I looked all over the place and the things that can only happen to me always happen to me here. So I'd get like the sweetener packets for the for my coffee and they're empty. Or I'll get a, I'll open a straw and both ends are closed. Um, I get fortune cookies with blank pieces of paper, no fortune. Well, now even the medical field <laughs> is out to get me. I opened up the scalpel blades after an exhaustive search. I open it up. Ta-da! No blade. Nothing in here. Um, so anyway, I had to share that with you. I mean, this is just too crazy. But anyway, um, I'm going to go find myself another scalpel blade. We're going to get back to work on this. And um, we'll, we'll try right, along I got here. myself another scalpel blade here. Um, I just want to pop this in here. Now, you guys know I'm the anti-OSHA. I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't like people telling you, oh, you got to do this or you got to do that. But I'm just going to tell you, um, careful with these, you know, because, you know, I moderate a modeling group and I get so, a lot of us get so sick of everybody who gets a boo-boo from their knife has to post a picture of it and everything. Uh, this is going to make a joke of that. These things are super sharp. Um, I'm not smart enough to be a doctor, but I do know that these things are extremely sharp because I've used them in, with modeling before, and it's really easy. You won't even feel yourself get cut. You won't feel a lick of, of nothing. You're just going to be bleeding everywhere, so be really careful with these. But anyway, um, I buy mine by the pack of 100. You can get these on Amazon anywhere, and uh, this is the type I'm going to be using here. Where's the little camera hole? There it is. And these are super duper thin, and this is going to be great for carving up that, uh, not carving up, carving the... Uh, the uh, line for the fins. So let's get back to work here and uh, and enough of the levity. Let's get serious. So you can see this thing got pretty gummed up. Um, I started working before the cement was really ready and I used the uh, the red knife on it which you can see isn't really all that sharp. Um, even the rounded knife um, isn't tremendously sharp. I mean it's sharp. It'll cut you but it ain't gonna be as sharp as this scalpel the surgical scalpel blade i mean this is like um this is like next level sharp really careful with these so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this one as an example to show you the difference so i gotta clean this out again you can see the mess i've made so i've got to do some more scraping and i'm just gonna scrape this out some more kind of make this as even as i can and yeah this is gonna really mess it up and it's going to look hopeless but when it's done you're going to see it's going to look better so um let me put a little more to me extra thin on here and some people will say oh use some really thin fishing line for this thing i was doing with the wire even at 32 gauge is too wide don't use the fishing line because uh, that's remember that's a uh, nylon that's going to get messed up by your um your cement on there now these blades, while that's setting, here's what I use. I'll show you the wrapper. Here's the kind I use. Um, and the reason I use this kind is because this blade, let me take it out of the handle, you'll see this is made with a number 11 on it, which is your standard X-Acto knife, and it will fit inside the handle of an X-Acto blade. Not perfectly, but well enough to do the job. So. I got my, I'm going to have to go with some bigger BC glasses. I'm going to need my six times BC glasses for this here. So let me put these on. Ooh, now I can see. Let's see if we can make these fins better now. One. Two. Three. Now this is tricky to keep them straight. It's, ah, you see I did that too soon. I'm going to have to let this sit a little longer, but... I'm going to continue just for the sake of doing this for you and then I'll clean it up without the camera because I can work better without it. But uh, You can see, let me put one over here and I'll put one over there. You can see how it's starting to come together nicely and if I really, and I'm going to when the camera's off and I can actually pay attention to what I'm doing instead of the camera angle. You can see. You can make some really nice fins in here again. And uh, it's going to take some work and some time. The big thing is work really hard on keeping it straight. 
and uh, take your time. It's going to take a couple of times. You have to go through this process about two or three times. And, uh, you know, you're going to have some cleanup to do, like this mess here that I'm making for myself back there. You can see, but once this is done, I'm going to show it to you. You can see it's going to look pretty good. I remember this is really zoomed in, so when you bring it back out to regular scale, regular size, you're going to find it's going to be more than adequate to make the engine look good. And don't forget, it's going to be mounted this way. You're going to be viewing it from head on, not like this. So you're going to have it looking good, plenty good for the job. So let me finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like okay. at the next stage. So here we are after the second scraping and you can see it gets chewed up a little bit in the process. But what you can also see is that line that existed here. Okay, you see that? That is gone. Now what I'm going to have to do is go in here carefully. After this dries a little more, I'm just going to kind of show you the process. I'm just going to very carefully scrape out. Oops, the knife is backwards. No wonder I ain't doing myself any favors. Scrape out these, these extra little turds that kind of show up and have to go. And I'll remove those. I'll probably do that with a uh, with a very fine pointed tweezers. In fact, uh, well, I can't. My camera stands in the way, but I'll just pick those out the tweezers. But you can see, let's put one right here. That these 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 things do go in nicely once that plastic is softened just a little bit. And you can see those lines go in nicely. It's just a matter of uh, cleaning them up. The important thing is not to use too much cement on that. Just enough to let it, just a little bit to seep in there. And then give it a couple minutes to start, not setting, but, you know, doing its thing. Because if you do it too soon, it's just going to smear everything. And if you do it too late, then it turns into gum. But I'm going to pick some of these out with the tweezers and uh, do a third grooving. And I'll show you that next. It doesn't look like much, but a little bit was done. And... Now we're going to clean this mess up here. Now, those of you who are a fan of Andy, you'll see these are his favorite types of tweezers. And these are good in the sense that uh, you can come get it from an angle, you know, like this, without getting in there too far. Um, unless you're like me and you have to bump your camera stand every step of the way. But you see, it really doesn't get in there. This tip's just a little bit too big. So what I like to do is I've got a set... I don't even know if these were an Amazon purchase, an eBay purchase, or your general craft store, but these tweezers, these have a very, very fine point, see? And so I can get in there very nicely if and I can, I was just going to say, if I can not hit my camera, but I did. So let me just steady it and see if I can't get it to refocus in here for you. Come on, get in there. I get underneath it. You see, I'm kind of pushing it up. Give myself a little longer of a threading to grab. Then I can get it out of there, see? No, you can't see because it's out of focus. There we go. Let me get this. There we are. So you see these things have to come out. It's, it, it is a process. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It ain't easy. And it is time consuming, but if you're really... Like me, and you're a nut for the detail in these engines because that's to me, there's two parts to an airplane that matter, and that's the engine and the cockpit. Um, but you can really make this go well. Okay, now you can see I got some more of those little fuzzy bastards in there. These iPhone cameras are a son of a gun to make videos with because they don't like to focus when you want them to. Let me try moving it off to the side a little bit. Sometimes that does it. There we go. Now. Oh. There we are. Sorry for all this amateur work, but like I said, I am not a professional. Now that paint's pretty dry, so it's safe to do this. So I'm going to get the toothbrush, and I'm just going to do that with it. That's going to remove most of the easy-to-reach stuff. And... Um, yeah, just put it anywhere. Um, I'll pick it up in a minute. Right. Thanks a lot, buddy. Have a good day, hey, you too, bud. So, anywhere. Anyway, uh, then you're going to hit your fins again. And this is very repetitive, very time-consuming. 
but it builds character, right? And I am a character. So, let's see what I can do about getting that to zoom in for you again. Probably nothing. Uh, and I'm sorry to make you watch all this amateur stuff, but I don't want to just be like Bob Vila and say, hey, let's do this, and then you come back to the camera and it's magically done, and you're wondering if he really did it at all. But now it's time to go in here and pick with these again and um, do some more of that. Now I think I can finish this up and uh, show you the finished. Okay, boys so, and girls, we're back. <coughs> yeah, did a little clean up there, as you can see, and I applied a little more cement. Now this should be probably, hopefully, the last time I have to put these fins in with the scalpel. And the cement is almost dried, so I can go in two directions now if I choose. As long as I don't beat the camera too much. There's two. Let's see if I can get... Ah, that looks bad. Let me fix that. There you go. I gotta get that to join. You see, that's part of the battle, is to get it to join the... Uh, let me lower this as I tilt this. So you want to keep these to join up later, further down, with the fin that's on it, see? There we go. It's kind of hard to see because the cement color there, but I can see through my great big thick six times Coke bottle glasses that it did. Here we are. And let's get this one. This is where a lot of people get crooked. And they're light like I just did there because I'm trying to avoid the camera. So let me try moving this. All right. And maybe you can get a little better of a look here. Sorry for all this amateur work, guys. I'm, but I am an amateur. Don't trust me. I'm not a professional. I am an amateur. So I'll have to fix that one later. But you can see... You can see how this is not terribly, it, it means tedious, but it's not difficult. I mean, it's just a matter of repeating the same steps several times. And that's basically what modeling is when you're building. Get my toothbrush and then give it a scuzz. See how that's looking in there. I got a couple more to put in there. How about one right there? Keep it straight. And I'm going to do is I'm going to just carve these last fins. And you can see it's starting to, I got a little deep on that one, so I'll have to clean that up a little bit, but no big deal. But, uh, I'll put a little more cement on here. Fill in those ones that got a little too deep and that'll be it. One more carving and I'll be done. I'll show you the next one when it's done. Okay guys, let me show you one more time here because I've had a little Jameson in here and I don't want to start messing with the scalpel once it kicks in. <laughs> um, you can see a couple more problematic areas we've got here. Uh, you can see, I'm probably not gonna spend too much time with it, but you can, and I'll, I'll just do one for the sake of showing it to you. The side, you can see that's a really badly pronounced uh, split there. And then I've got one of the uh, one of the valve lifter covers here, this this one right here. You can see it's really bad there. And on one of these, uh, or actually a couple of these cylinders, there's a really bad misalignment. You can see where there's an extra fin. It, it didn't line up correctly. So these are all misaligned. And right here, there's, an, there's like half a fin up to here, and then there isn't one on the other half because it's not aligned properly. So... I'm going to address all these. Uh, let's run through one right now. Let's go ahead and start scraping on, uh, let me find one. How about, where'd that misaligned one go? Let's scrape, this one's got a pretty bad step on it here. So let's start out again. We're just going to, uh, we're going to scrape this gently across, smooth that step out, lose some of our detail, which isn't gonna matter because we're gonna get it back. Now we're going to scrape this part that's all uneven here. You see where there's too much 
right there above the tip of the blade. Going to cut that out smooth. Push that little guy out of there. Get on out of there, okay? And then the side of the thing will do right here. We'll do the same thing, scrape that out. I don't know if you can see it. There it is back in there. Let's scrape that out. We're gonna scrape that smooth. And I'll finish that one. And first, I'll show you the next step. I'm gonna put some Tamiya Extra Thin on here. It's gonna soften that plastic up nicely. Let it fall into place. We'll get that right here where it's where it's also gonna need it. And I'll let that dry. And then I'll turn the camera back on and show you the, the pin scraping. Or the uh, fin scraping. See, Jameson's already kicking in. So here we are. You can see the uh, the cylinder where we scraped off over here. Well, you can't now, but now you can. I got on the camera. You can see where we scraped it smooth on the side here. If it focuses, there we are, where it's even. And you can see on the cylinder side where I put the cement and started scraping the fins in. And I can tell it's that cylinder for a couple reasons. The way the spot is on the uh, valve lifter cover, and also it's a little shiny down the middle where I scraped and put the cement in. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it's very visible to the eye. And again, I got the scalpel blade and I pushed them through. And you could do it with that wire trick I showed you earlier. If you vise, if you put it on a vise to hold it still, and you got wire thin enough, but that 32 gauge was just a little bit too thick. So I'm going with the scalpel tip. And I'm um, making these groove cuts. And I'm just gonna do it on the one. I'm not gonna do it on all of them because when you lay it, you're never gonna see it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of the fins on here. And then the next step from there is going to be to get some Mr. Surfacer 1200, okay? And then I'm going to hand brush that onto the cylinder bank. And that's gonna show me, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna show me where I need more at work and it's also going to fill in the very small uneven areas and the very tiny holes. Now, some of you might wanna do that with a thousand Mr. Service or Thousand, but the 1200 seems to do my purpose because that Thousand gets a little thick and you end up having to do those fins all over again. So, uh, I'm going to do that and we'll show you when I'm done with this portion. Well, here we are. <clears throat> I've got the Mr. Surfacer on there against the 1200. And it doesn't have to be black or gray, it's just that that's the color I have for it. You can see I've hand brushed it on there. And it has filled in a lot of the flaws that were there before. It hunkered down really nicely. Now what I'm gonna have to do, you can see certain places like right here, I'm gonna have to go rescribe those fins again, but you can see that there is very little left of those, uh, of those lines at all. So I'm gonna go rescribe those one more time. And then I'm gonna spray it with some Mr. Uh, Surfacer 1500 black and that'll show me my final work that I need to do and Then I will address that then I'll show you the cylinder bank once it's all done and reprimed in black
And this is where it's important to tilt your work or your knife to keep it steady with it. Ooh, that's way too deep. Way too deep. That's going to need help later for certain. Yeah, it's a do over. But the others are all done. And you can see they're looking pretty good. Even the sides are looking pretty good now. And the fronts. So that one's a do over, but this is almost ready to prime. To, uh, turn the fan off. The air conditioner off for a little bit here and sweat. Uh, so you can hear me. So I've hit it with the first heavy priming of very thinned out Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. And you can see it's starting, it's actually looking pretty good. But remember, you don't want confirmation bias. Don't look for things that justify you thinking that it's so awesome. Try to look for things on it that are going to show you where you need to pay attention and maybe fix something a little bit. So, and you also see that it's hard to get the camera focus on it once it's black. It just doesn't like to do that. So let me turn it this way a little bit. Sorry for making you get seasick here, but... So I can see, there's the one I went way too deep on. But for the most part, these are all looking just about where I want them to. Um, the alignment isn't perfect, but I'll address that on the next thing. So I can see where I need the work to be done on here. But for the most part, those very heavy pronounced lines are gone. I just need to fix some of these fins and line them up better. So one more time and then we'll put this thing together and take a look at it. To address the, um, the areas with problems now, um, I got a good look at the light and I scraped out where I need. This one I'm okay with. This one, this was just, I got ham-fisted with this one. I put way too much cement on it and I'm at the point with this one where I'm at the salvage stage. I'm not going to like this no matter what I do. I'm just going to try and salvage it. This one I'm pretty okay with. This one just needs a little help. This one I'm okay with. This one needs a little help. That one needs a little help. That one I'm okay with. And then we are back to the disaster. So i um, just going to address these again. i um, just going to give them a little bit. Just a tiny bit. And this time I'm going to use the, uh, the fast dry stuff. I'm going to give them just a little bit. A tiny bit of it. And I want it to dry quick. And then I'm going to do the small repairs that they are going to need and enjoy. And you can see on these uh, valve covers, they just need a little bit of smoothing in the back. Then I'll be ready to prime it one more time. And uh, then I'll put the, uh, the semi-gloss black over it. And what I'll be using is um, the Tamiya Lacquers LP5 semi-gloss black and then we'll take a look at them once they're done and I think that's going to be it for the cylinders okay it's finally time to do something fun here I'm uh, I'm adequately happy with the way that the cylinder banks have turned out it was a lot of work but I'm pretty happy with them now and though it calls for a semi-gloss black on this engine what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a 50-50 mix of uh, LP27, which is German Gray, and uh, LP5, which is semi-gloss black. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want them to be quite black because when I do the dry brushing of the, uh, of the gloss black on there, or the wash, I should say, the, the gloss black's going to stick out a little more and you're going to have more depth in the engine. So I'm going to uh, shoot this at about... I'm going to thin it about one and a half to one thinner to paint and uh, I'm going to shoot it about oh 15 psi through an Iwata HPCS. Well, here we are. Um, the painting has been done on the two cylinder banks and I'm adequately satisfied with the way they've turned out. So they are ready. The two rings. I have also painted the same mixture of 50-50 um, German gray and semi-gloss black and the uh, rods are also painted in the same color 
and they are ready to go. What I'm going to do after that is I'm going to take these rods and I'm going to um, have each rod individually. I'm going to hand brush with gloss black and um, that's going to make them uh, stick out like they should. They are, in fact, were gloss black looking at all the pictures I have. Then I'm going to um, take the two cylinder banks and I am going to make a wash of them with this MIG fresh engine oil. And then I will probably brush a little bit, if that doesn't do the job, brush a little bit of um, gloss black onto the uh, fins to make them stick out a little more. And the darkness is also going to uh, benefit them. Then I'm going to take the aft end, the aft portion the, where the exhaust goes, and I'm going to paint that with um, AK Extreme Metal 484 Burnt Metal. And the front ring and the back accessory case, um, I'm going to paint with AK Extreme Metal White Aluminum. And the smaller, there's more smaller parts, I'll address those bit by bit individually. I'm going to take the front of the engine and I'm going to paint that with, uh, looking at the pictures, the light ghost gray LP37 actually is just about the right color for that. What I used to do is I would get Vallejo and I would mix their their black and their white these ones here until I got the gray that I wanted and I would put a drop of their natural steel in there and that really made it look good but I'm usually working in 48th scale which is much smaller so uh, this is a considerably bigger piece and I'm afraid of getting brush strokes and because I'm not I'm not awesome at hand painting Hell, I'm not awesome at anything but especially hand painting and um, so I'm just gonna airbrush that that color on and then I might rub it with some pigments uh, some steel pigment or something to bring it up to life and then um, a very light hit of uh, and I mean really light thin super thinned out gloss black over the whole thing to tie it together and then another touch where it needs it of uh, oil so here we go I'll see you in a minute or so okay it's been a long day um, but everything is painted and dressed to my satisfaction you can see everything has been painted the, the right colors and I've got the uh, cylinders looking good like I want them and I'm ready to put this together now you're wondering what's with the q-tip well let me tell you this is a plastic hollow tube for a stem and you'll notice on the fronts of these cylinders that I've drilled the holes I don't want to just stick wires in there, I want to actually have plugs on there. So what I'm going to do is, just like stretched sprue, I'm going to hold this over the candle and stretch it nice and long, and as it gets longer and skinnier, it's going to remain hollow. And um, I'm going to use those for the plugs. So I'm going to make them a little, you know, they'll fit in a hole, but they'll be narrower than the wire that's going into them, so it'll actually look like wire to spark plug to cylinder. So, um, as you can see, the bugs are out now that the sun has gone down, and I cannot stand them little bastards flying around. They irritate me and get my attention when I'm trying to look at something else. So I'm going to call this a night, um, at least for the filming, and I will continue this as soon as I get the chance. Thanks for watching. Good old Terry, you forgot to tell us about the vice, like you said you were going to do. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Here's the vise right here. It's um, it's called a pan of ice. You can see it right here. And I looked at the uh, all the typing on there, and it's made by a company called Panavice Products out of Reno, Nevada. If that helps you any. And um, I really like this thing a lot. Um, I told you about how it's got the rubber pads. These are hard rubber, like a tire. So they will keep things from sliding around, but as you tighten them, it, they'll give a little bit to where it won't smash your piece. And, you know, it's like any vice, you know, the crank opens them or closes them. But what I really like about it is that 
turning this knob allows me to do, move it back and forth this way. I can also uh, turn it this way and the ball spins freely. So, I mean, there's really, and for those of you who want to attach it permanently to your workplace, it's got these holes in here so you can screw it onto your uh, bench if you want to. But I do a lot of moving around with it, so um, I keep that where it is. Something else I want to point out to you is, uh, and you probably know this, but I just found out yesterday. Um, Vallejo's Metal Colors are out in a new formula, and seemingly they're supposed to last a lot longer. Um, the whole line I had turned to crud, got all thick and like it was a bunch of balls in there, but... Uh, the new ones you can tell from the old ones because it's uh, more of a dull metal color instead of that ultra shiny reflective color that they had on there before. So I haven't had this bottle but about a week, um, but I used it a little bit to paint the uh, the uh, lifter covers on the uh, cylinders. So um, you know you might want to give those a try if you're big on those and you're at this point. I'm going to give it another chance. You know, uh, see how it goes. But anyway. Um, I'm going to do a little more work on this engine, and I'm probably going to put it together tonight, and um, I'll weather it for you tomorrow on the camera, or whatever day I get this done. And uh, we'll get to the cockpit hopefully by then, too. So anyway, um, this was a pretty long one. Um, I didn't do any editing, because I think seeing the mistakes and all that stuff kind of, you know, you're probably seeing the same mistakes that you, you're making and how to fix them as they go along. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.